Okay. Uh, welcome, everyone. My name is Judd Mellinger Block. I'm the director of the Pennsylvania Primary Care Career Center, and we're here for our fourth uh, installment of a series of interviews with providers from community health centers here in Pennsylvania. I'm joined today by Laurie Dwyer, CRNP, a, uh, a nurse practitioner at the Newcastle office of the Primary, of Primary Health Network. Uh, Laurie is a graduate of the Jameson Hospital, Memorial Hospital School of Nursing, got her BSN from uh, University of Phoenix and did her CRNP work at Walden University. Uh, she's been in nursing for 18 years, so she's seen a lot in that time. And I'm um, sure she could tell many, many stories, but we'll try to keep this uh, to 20 minutes today. So, uh, Lori, welcome. It's good to have you here. Thank you. you bet. Um, so let's get started. And just to you know, give a little background, where you grew up, uh, your family influences on your career, and uh, anything you feel comfortable sharing about that. Sure. Um, I grew up in a small town here, uh, Sharpsville, Pennsylvania, and that's currently where we still live and uh, live here with my husband and my two youngest daughters. Um, one is in sixth grade, one's in eighth grade here at Sharpsville Middle School. My oldest, who's 22, is in college right now, and she's actually graduating next month from Shadyside School of Nursing. Um, I'm the f actually the first one in my family. Um, to go into the healthcare field. Um, I think kind of my influence was, oh gosh, a long time ago when my grandfather was in the hospital, he had open heart surgery. And back then there really weren't the age restrictions and limits on, on people being able to go into the hospital to visit. So going there and, and seeing the nurses taking care of him at that time kind of piqued my interest um, and stayed with me. Originally, I actually started to go to school for business. Mm. Um, mm -hmm. I found out, surprise, I was pregnant with my first daughter and actually um, went to nursing school and graduated when she was three years old. So throughout nursing school, bachelor's degree, master's degree, um, I did it while raising kids working full time and still trying to be, you know, an involved parent in the school the past few years doing this as well. Wow. That's a lot. Yes. So, uh, <laughs> so why doable. You, yeah, well, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you're not the only person to ever do it, but every one of you have done it is a, is a, you know, an extraordinary person in my opinion. That's, that's tough. Um, so why did you choose uh, to be a nurse practitioner? What kind of, you already talked about some of the barriers you had to overcome, but why did you move on from, um, you know, from your BSN to be a CRNP and you know, what motivated you there? Um, I think more so the independence um, in being able to actually practice as a nurse practitioner, um, not having to ask for permission to do what I feel is right for my patients. Mm -hmm. When working in the hospital, um, you know, you have to obviously run everything past the doctors, um, ask them, can we do this for this patient and either get met with a, yes, that's a great idea, or no, we're not going to do that. And, you know, you kind of question, well, you, why not? Right. Um, working as a nurse practitioner, though, I don't have to question, can we do this? Mm -hmm. If I feel that in, you know, a test or something is right for my patient, I have the independence in my practice to be able to say, okay, this is the route we're going to go. These are the tests that we're going to do to get to the bottom of what's really going on. Right. So tell me a little bit about how your 18 years of, of practicing, of being an RN, um, how does that inform your work of the CRNP? Um, I think it really helped with, um, you know, working as a nurse practitioner, because not only did I work on a telemetry floor, I worked on open heart step down units. And the last part of my career, I was actually an intensive care unit nurse for about 10 years. So, you know, you see in the intensive care unit, worst case scenario, you learn to prioritize what needs to be done. And in seeing patients in the office, it helps to prioritize, okay, these are the things that we're looking for. What do we need to do first? Gotcha. Thank you. Um, so what caused you to work at, um, at Primary Health Network? What, what led you to, to PHN? 
Dr. Garrow. Um, uh, I've uh, known Dr. Garrow since working at Sharon Regional. So I've known him for years back when he was working as, as an oncologist there. He is just very passionate about the work that's being done at Primary Health Network. And, you know, when he speaks about it, you can just see how proud he is of the work that's being done at Primary Health Network. And, you know, working with and for him was obviously a major thing that drew me to Primary Health Network. But um, I guess more so what Primary Health Network stands for as well. You know, we're trying to reach out to those in the community that may not be able to afford or be able to, um, you know, get the health care that they need due to lack of insurance, lack of income. At Primary Health, that doesn't matter. It makes no difference your ability to pay. We mm -hmm. just, we want to be able to have you come to the office and, and see a provider and provide you with the same care that anybody who has any type of commercial insurance can get as well. Great. Great. Um, so, you know, why is that important to you? I mean, talk about your, maybe your philosophy on healthcare or whatever that, you know, why, you know, there's, there's plenty of places you could work where you're still seeing a lot of patients, maybe not the same ones, but you know, why, why does that matter to you? I really feel like, um, you know, nobody should be discriminated against based on their ability to pay where it is that they come from, whether they're compliant with treatments or not. You know, there's a lot of um, healthcare systems out there that if you are one of their patients and you're not compliant with your appointments or you're not compliant with your treatments, uh -huh. you're dismissed from that practice. At primary health, that's not the case. Um, you know, we try to work with the patients in order to come up with treatment plans, follow up plans that maybe work more so for them due to transportation, their ability to pay things if they're self pay, um, and not just kind of write them off. Right. Is there anything that's uh, that surprised you about working at, at community at, at primary health network that? Maybe you thought it was going to be a little different than it, than it is. Not so much different. I think it took more getting used to realizing where some of these patients are coming from and where some of their disparities are. Um, you know, the first time I've, I ever talked to a patient, because when I started, I started at the beginning of the pandemic. So we oh. were doing, yeah, we were doing mainly telehealth visits. So, you know, in talking to these people on the phone, based on symptoms that they're having, recommending that they go to the emergency room and be evaluated, um, and being told, well, I have to wait for the next bus because they can't afford an ambulance ride or they don't have a ride there really kind of made it sink in. Okay, this is not something that I'm, that I'm used to coming from, from where I, I live and, you know, the surrounding areas here in Sharpsville, um, we don't have a lot of the population that's not able to get to the emergency room should they need to. Um, and I guess for me, it never really was a concern of how I was going to get somewhere or, you know, worrying about should I need to call an ambulance, the, the price that it's going to be. Um, it was just a real eye opener and made me think things differently. Yeah, those, those social determinants of health, uh, for those of us who are fortunate or whatever you want to call it, to not have to worry about them too much, boy, they, they really impact a lot of people. Yes. Day in and day out. It's, it's tough. Yes. Yeah. So what, what, what would you tell, uh, what would, should other NPs or clinicians, clinicians know about, about working at a community health center? What would, you, what would you tell them the pros and cons are of working in a community health center? Um, I guess part of the, the cons is the compliance um, with some patients. It can become frustrating on our end just because, you know, we make these recommendations to the patients and either they follow through or don't follow through with them. Some of them it's because of money. Some of it's because of lack of understanding. And I think um, the fact that some of them are embarrassed to say either they don't understand or they can't afford it 
that's what makes, you know, this job kind of difficult at times because you want to do your best to help these patients. Um, and the lack of communication sometimes that comes from them really kind of puts a barrier because there are other treatments, other medications that we can try that may be cheaper, more affordable for the patients, but still, you know, get to the same goal where we want them to be. Um, I think the pros are is it's like I said, it's a real eye opener. It makes you think of things a little bit differently. And just knowing the fact of some of the population that come there, you're you're helping them sometimes making a huge difference um, right. by actually sitting and listening to them and listening to their concerns um, is a real pro in, in my book. That's awesome. Thank you. So what so what's a day in the in the office like uh, for for Lori Dwyer? What's it what's it, what's a typical is there a typical day or, or <laughs> no not no really. <laughs> <laughs> Each day some kind of sometimes it's some kind of a surprise along the way, and that's okay. That's the way it is in healthcare. You have right. to learn to be a little bit flexible and and kind of go with the flow. Um, but we start seeing patients at 9 a.m. in the office. Um, generally, I like to try to be there a little bit early to kind of get my day situated and, and get a plan in place. And, you know, me and the nurse that I work with, we meet and we talk about, okay, this is what this person needs. This is what this person needs this visit, really trying to close those gaps in healthcare that can happen as far as patient screenings, recommendations based on their age, gender diagnosis. Um, and, you know, usually on any given day, I have between 18 and 20 patients on my schedule. So, so sometimes, you know, with, with the patients that don't show, um, we see anywhere between 14 to 20 patients in a day. Okay. That's a busy day. Yes. yes. <laughs> so, so speaking of patients, is there, is there a patient that stands out as a good example of, of the benefits of working at Premier Health Network and doing what you do, or you know, a story you could you could tell us. I think the it's more of a group of of patients. You know, those ones that are self pay that don't have the means to be able to um, have insurance and um, still want to be there and get the appropriate health care. Um, right. You know, working at Primary Health, we have the sliding fee in the office to where, you know, they sign up based on income. Um, so it's really an income driven um, payment plan for these patients to still be able to come in and receive the health care mm -hmm. that they need, despite not being able to pay for everything up front. Um, and, you know, we have Newcastle Pharmacy that's there as well that does the same for them so they can get their medications um, and not worry about having to front that cost of those medications right away. Right. That's great. That's great. Well, um, anything else you wanted to add today? Not that I can think of. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll, we'll tell Dr. George Gare, the chief medical officer there, that you put in a good word for him. That'll get, <laughs> that'll get you a couple brownie points. So, Laura, thank you so much for, for joining us today and uh, have a great day. Thank you. You too. Thank you.